everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Vicious RV, and if you can't tell by the way my hair is whipping in the wind, uh, obviously a joke there, it's a windy flipping day right now, so apologies if the, occasionally the microphone goes <laughs> Anyway, behind us we have the 30.5 CKTS uh, Eagle HT by Jayco, and this RV I think is best described with the phrase semi-nomadic. What I, what's awesome about this one, it gives you that big living space of like a North Point or a Pinnacle. You have opposing super slides, all the windows on the campsite of this thing, and their maximized windows really give you a huge, awesome view. Um, and, uh, you know, island kitchen, big time storage in that kitchen, too. If you're going to spend some serious time in this thing, if you're a serious, like, you know, campsite cook, this model has a kitchen that's too legit to quit. But it has a little bit of a smaller compressed upper deck, and the benefit to that is it gives this one the ability to uh, be not quite as big, not quite as heavy. Um, you know, the name Eagle HT, I think, is certainly trying to imply half-ton towability. I don't feel this is a half-ton towable model. To me, you want at least a three-quarter ton and up. Now, the cool thing, I think this is an awesome fit for like a three-quarter ton gasser, someone who's like, I don't want to dedicate my life to the upkeep that goes with a diesel engine. You don't have to do that here. Um, we're looking at one with some optional equipment today, but like we're looking at modern farmhouse, we're looking at second air conditioner, but there's a bunch of different things you can do with these that I'm going to mention as we go. What's also kind of cool, these guys give you factory standard tire pressure monitoring, so you have a little more peace of mind when you're rip roaring down the road. Now what's also awesome, these have a warranty for full-time RVing, so if you really are looking for that snowbird, sunbird, semi-nomadic life, if the wind's going to carry you away like it might do to me here in a minute, this is an RV that might really work for you. Now, one of the first things I want to mention as we step inside here, we're looking at one of two different decors that Jayco offers, the modern farmhouse decor today. You really see it show up in the kitchen, and this one has, like... You know, when I opened with this video, I talked about how awesome the living room is. Big living room, big living room, like a big North Point or whatever. The fact is, the kitchen is truly the unsung hero of this floor plan. This has one of the best kitchens per capita I think you will ever find in a fifth wheel this size. And we're going to dive into that in more detail uh, as we go. But the modern farmhouse decor is not all you're stuck with. Most brands say, yeah, well, the taste is delicious, so you better eat it because we only make it in one way. Well, Jayco gives you two options. And the other one uh, is called Craftsman or American Craftsman or something like that, but brown. And it's all of the browns approved by the Homeowners Association. But the fact is, it is really good looking. I really enjoy the Craftsman decor. And if you twisted my arm and made me choose one or the other, I would probably go with the Craftsman decor today. It kind of snuck up on me. And uh, it's it's much better than the, um, it used to be called American Tradition brown floor plan color that they used to have. And another, I mean, again, if I just back up here, like I said, we're going to see this all open in more detail. But the kitchen in this thing is fantastic and it has an insane amount of dry storage space. But we're not quite there yet. First and foremost, if you look closely up here, you can actually see the grain in the wood. Because it's real wood slide fascia. It's not particle board or anything like that. Neither is the cabinetry. Uh, the cabinetry sounds like the, the type of music that a bunch of lumberjacks would play. It's called lumbercore. <laughs> but, um, you know, that joke brought to us by uh, a regular viewer, Mr. Uh, or pardon me, Ms. Pardon me. Ms. Melissa Rendazzo. Thank you very much for that one. Now, the uh, theater seat has those little swivel stands over here. Ever wonder why no other brands really tend to use those things? It's because they can't without paying Jayco money. I think Jayco either has some kind of exclusivity or patent pending or something like that. But not everybody can just use those things. And you know what I want to do? Let me get you over here. Um, I'm going to sit you in the theater seat. But real quick, I don't want to forget something. I think this might be, literally be the original nerdism. If you don't see the square, then you won't hear the air with the whisper ducted air system. Now, we're in an Eagle HT. Think of it like Little Bird versus Big Bird. In Little Bird single 15,000 BTU air is standard. Second 15,000 BTU air is optional. In Big Bird, you get both airs standard and they're both dual whisper ducted. This one is not because it's optional. Now, you can see how this is another nerdism, No Neck Wrecker Entertainment Center. That's another one of those old school nerdisms. What I want to draw your attention to is not that though, but look at the windows. They use max airflow windows, although a dual pane frameless option is available. But notice how Every window in this thing opens for airflow, including the sofa side windows. And that is one of those key little details right there that not every brand does. 
It's those little things that separate stuff. Now, you, it's hard to see because it's kind of black on dark brown, but you notice that above the sofa, you have lights for the lights above the sofa. You notice that beside the, the theater seat, you have a switch for the lights above the theater seat and some USB plugs. Um, there are household and USB plugs on those side stands on both sides of the, uh, the hide-a-bed sofa, by the way. And speaking of hide-a-bed and all that, let's start diving in to a little more detail, Jacques Cousteau style. Beginning with those blackout roller shades and what I like to call the destination dining desk, where um, that floor flush-ish slide really kind of kicks in here. And um, you got a pair of fold-away guest chairs, as well as the fact that that table can extend. Now, speaking of extending, the height of bed extends out. Now, that's going to be, it's like, it's a short bed, so a tall person like me, my feet would hang off the edge uh, overnight. But you don't want the guests staying too awful long, you know? <laughs> you want them just comfy enough. Obviously, that TV can pivot around. So if you're looking for cuddle compliance on the rear sofa, you can get it there. And this is what I was talking about. All of the storage in the kitchen. So the thing is, notice how you've got three pantries here. You've got one pantry next to the television. You have a pantry next to the fridge. And then you have a convertible pantry closet a switcheroo combo with a magnetic Mervin shelf going on next to the giant coffee bar, which has power outlets above it, by the way, because you can't really see those easily as I sweep around this footage. Let me try to remember to get you a better look at that. The thing is, like, you could have as much or as little pantry storage as you want. Not to mention you've got all that drawer storage and a large 22-inch oven in here as well. Huge space for a wastebasket under the sink. Like, this is a dynamite kitchen. This living room is great. Got the opposing slides. That's great. The, the, the kitchen is truly the unsung hero of this floor plan. And I want to mention a couple things. You actually have three different refrigerator options in here, last I knew. There's a look at the coffee bar with the outlets. I wish those outlets were down lower, but it's just, it's one of those little things. Anyway, um, three different fridges. Let me run you through them here. Like, you might be looking at this thing going, why do I need three pantries? Well, you're always going to have that pantry right there, no matter what you do. The pantry next to the coffee bar, well, again, you could convert that into, like, a closet if you wanted it to be there. This one can also be exchanged, although in, in a sense it could be killed, not like mob hit style killed, it could be sacrificed. Well now, that sounds like Indiana Jones. Um, it could be swaptioned into a bigger fridge. So you, you have, uh, what we're looking at here is the 12 volt DC compressor fridge. That would be my personal preference. Now the, the face plates on that could be exchanged so they'll always match your decor. There's a gas electric two way fridge option that'll also match the decor. And you uh, have a, uh, you can get rid of that pantry and get a four door gas electric fridge if you want the maximum storage capacity this one can have. Cool thing about that being gas electric, it can be very off grid friendly. Um, and this RV has the option of being outfitted with several different Overlander solar packages. Now, um, if you're not familiar with that, that's a new thing for 23. Jayco's really created a standardized solar platform. Um, it's very similar, very similar to what Keystone's been doing with SolarFlex to the point that I would say, I think somebody's been copying off of somebody else's test. But that ain't a bad thing. You can put some serious juice on these now and inverter capability if you want. All that being said though, if I could have one wish on this RV, I would wish for that option of like one of those bigger 16 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridges. And it might require getting rid of that pantry over there, but that's what I would like to do because I think we've established this thing has pantry enough. But what, you know, fridge, what decor, how many airs, what solar package would you want on these? We've got a couple more options we're going to talk about as we go. And I think almost everything in this living room and kitchen, like, it's extremely well done extremely well the upper deck is where i think you begin to lose some folks and and i want you to keep in mind um i think everything that you might want changed in this upper deck they already offer in the big bird eagle 321 this is intentionally made with a smaller lighter weight upper deck and that does mean that maybe you're making a couple little sacrifices. Now, one of the things you're not sacrificing is some good toilet space right here. You get that uh, door out of the way with the butt napkin roller on it, and uh, you got you got plenty of room around that porcelain foot flush stool. The shower is where I can see some people being concerned. Now, it's just tall enough. The peach fuzz on top of my head that I call hair, but isn't really. Um, you know, I can stand in this thing without my head scraping the ceiling. It's not the tallest upper deck. I think it's only, it's probably about six, three-ish, four exactly up here, but I'm, I'm just estimating there. 
Um, elbow room in a radius shower can be a little tight. So if you're a bigger person, that might be a challenge. It is neat they still put that little night light in there. But on top of that, you may have noticed you've got a what I call the backlit morning mirror, or I call it the the, the, the zombie gazer. Because when I wake up, man, I I I look like Romero's House of the Dead. Like, I'm just not friendly. Big old dark puffy circles under my eyes. It, it takes me a while to wake up. But you've got a closet slide upstairs, not a full bed slide. And starting over there, it actually goes into the bedroom and the bathroom. And giving you kind of a look at everything else around here, you can see that there's some other decent storage in this bathroom. That's actually something I think it does very well. By the way, how do you like that little navel blue accent? Um, that's No matter what decor you get in the living room, you always have a little bit different bathroom decor. And I think that's very um, residential in mindset. Now, I've shown this floor plan the last couple of years almost every single time with a king bed. Queen bed is standard. That's what we're looking at right here. And it's a true queen, not a shorty pants. It's a 60 by 80 true queen bed. Very, very wide open side pocket friendly right there up by the headboard with household and USB outlets. One of the other really kind of cool things about that is uh, like if you're claustrophobic, you don't feel like you're really boxed into that thing quite so badly. Sliding over here to the, because it's a dual entry bed and bathroom, if uh, you know, you've got the, the hallway door closed at night and you slide in now this door, this is kind of what you might see over here. Or if you wake up and you hear a crazy sound, you can kind of peek over at your campsite, see what's going on. And that has the same uh, roller shade, zip, zip, that we saw everywhere else. So if you really want to blot this thing out and enjoy privacy, you can do that. Um, up top here, this is 50 amp. It will normally be second air ready. The one we're looking at today was built with the optional second air conditioner. And given this size of RV, I think that's how I would like it as well. But again, I kind of asked, you know, what features, what options, what equipment would you like on one of these? And I, I'd love it if you left me a little comment there. Because that information, one, it can help us tell manufacturers whether they're doing the right job or not. But two, it can help us make sure that we're building the right RVs for you at our dealership. So Jerry Maguire, help me help you. Zooming in over here a little bit and taking a look up top there, you see that's going to be our hanging storage in this model. Now, this one does not have any sort of allowances for like a, uh, a washer dryer, even a combo unit. They make other floor plans that do that. They make the big eagles. And that's one of the things I want to mention to you. Like you can get a king bed in this, but it can't be an east-west bed. Although if you want that, you look at a 321 Eagle. It's bigger, it's a higher trim package, it's more expensive, it's heavier weight. But the fact is that one can give you a uh, uh, an east-west bed slide, a full front closet, washer and dryer prep. It can give you a, uh, a single entry bathroom with a big rectangular shower instead of a radius shower. Again, I think almost everything that you might want done differently, they already do that in another model. Another thing working in the favor of the travel function of this one is the fact that with that north-south bed, not in a slide, there's zero question and zero debate as to whether you can or cannot use it when the slide is closed. When the bed is in the slide, frankly, nobody can tell you if you can or you can't because no manufacturer and no supplier tests for that. Now, that's different than the towable and the motorized industry, but in the towable industry, I can't really in good conscience tell you if you can or cannot use a slide when it's closed. Um, it's just kind of one of those things. But in this one, we can definitely use the king or queen bed, whichever one this one has, the bathroom. And when we come downstairs here, I don't remember. It's been a little while since I recorded this one. Can we get to the fridge? If memory serves correctly, it sure looks like we can. However, if you look at this, it hits the island right there. That being said, I do have a way to get around that. And it's really quite simple. These doors are reversible. So if you don't mind or if you want it to open the other direction, you actually can make it travel functional. But weirdly, by default, it isn't. I don't mind sharing that, though. I like to give you that good, real information so you know exactly what you're getting for your lots and lots of money before you pull the trigger. And if you appreciate that kind of consideration, if you're new with us, hit that subscribe button while we step outside. So I kind of talked about it when we first began out here, but what does it take to get this thing down the road? And again, looking at those weights and measures, looking at the size of this, and specifically looking at the hitch weight, I don't feel that the common half ton pickup is the right uh, pairing for this. Now it is technically possible. There are some extremely 
capable heavy duty half tons out there but those are typically ones that you order straight from a manufacturer those are not usually ones that they just have laying around at the dealership for you to pick up because they're more expensive and they're lower miles per gallon you know it's just kind of the way the knee bone talks to the leg bone a little bit I do recommend a three-quarter ton generally speaking for one of these now they've swapped over to tankless water heaters and at this stage it's almost a question of who hasn't it's becoming a very very short list um, we've got that enclosed privatized docking station over here which is very cool I'll get you a better look at the pass-through off the other side but one thing I want to show you is I have motion lighting on both sides of this and once again as I mentioned uh, when we began our adventure together here it's incredibly windy currently and I'm doing the best that I can to keep the microphone shielded from that but uh, there's only so much uh, you know man-made stuff we can do before mother nature decides she's gonna win and uh, you know at some point I'm gonna lose that uh, pushing match now up front here if you got a really short bed pickup you might enjoy the benefit of this Kurt turning point hitch although by default it doesn't pivot it can if basically you engage or disengage the lock as it were up front here there's room for uh, four traditional batteries and you can also get this built uh, with the Eagle dry camp package where I have my battery box and my jacket and my umbrella over there um, that can be gen prepped and instead of a pair of 30 pound propane tanks which will hang out in those little side saddle doors that I don't have open it would swap up to a pair of 40 pound tanks I think I've gotten that wrong multiple times in my previous videos apologies there but you can go from 60 to 80 pounds of propane on this um, although 40 pound tanks you pretty much have to get them filled you're not going to do any exchanges but where are you going to get a 30 pound tank exchanged anyway I don't think there's a whole lot of space to do that remember when I mentioned you can get the bed slide version of this if you want a second awning on the face of the slide you'll also find that on the Big Brother full Eagle version of it um, as a, a little bit of a workaround when it's not crazy windy like this you can get one of those little easy up screen rooms to put over there and uh, one uh, avoid malaria by keeping the mosquitoes away and, and two you can enjoy uh, just a little bit more shaded patio type space now this right here is one of the areas where it is obviously different from the east-west full bed slide version since it doesn't have as big of an upper deck it has a smaller uh, pass-through compartment but it's still you may notice completely carpetless down in here so it's not going to hold moisture and become a musty mildew basement kind of smell thing and if I uh, pop and lock my knees like a hip-hop dancer you can see that uh, radiant barrier on the bath and bed deck that's one of those little Jayco doing Jayco things that very few brands match. And the idea behind that is like your underbelly. It's enclosed, it's forced air heated, it's insulated, has radiant barrier. That barrier goes, you know, up the nose, across the bed deck, uh, over the roof, you know, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house. They got that radiant stuff all over the place on here to give you more even thermal consistency. But radiant barrier material itself, it's a good reflector. It's not actually insulation. It works in conjunction but it's not a replacement for so kind of keep that in mind now these are the zero gravity easy up down stable steps but notice how they're giving you that extra little handle if you have a set of more ride steps and I think the LCI stable steps have something similar you can actually get that extra handle and if you notice it just basically bolts right into the side of the step there's not a whole lot of mystery to it down here They've been doing it a little bit longer than everybody else. Jayco's really the reason more and more brands have gone to Goodyear tires or better. You know, they've kind of pushed that envelope a lot. And uh, these do come with factory TPMS as well. One of the cool things, these max out at 80 PSI. So like if you go to a gas station, the gas station air pump can take care of that. And you may also notice that more ride uh, CRE 3000 suspension in there. That stands for compression rubber equalization with a three inch variance. So. Uh, what that's all doing basically it's taking a lot of that road chatter out of the towing and going experience before it gets translated up into the structure of your RV uh, by the way Tunga Groove plywood floor decking five uh, uh, five eighths in thickness you've also got a, uh, a three eighths plywood roof decking on this 16 inch on center roof uh, trusses which means fully walkable and actually um, quite a few brands do this, but very few brands talk about it. Uh, Cougar and Jayco are about the only two I've ever seen talk about this. They also have walkable slide boxes. That being said, no way in heck my fat butt would be getting up there. That's just me though. Another cool towing thing, you got the J Smart Lighting. Uh, S-M-A-R-T as that word is spelled and that stands for something. I always want to say signals, markers, and reverse travel, but that's not technically what it is. But anyway, a lot of RVs when you shift into reverse, they have the little extra light thing that'll flare up there. But with your Jayco's, 
those lights will also blink with your turn signals, which is very cool. And you have a standard towing hitch. Eagle HT was the first mainstream fifth wheel to standardize this on any available floor plan. 3,000 pound tow rating with a 300 pound uh, tongue rating. So like if you're using it for accessories like a generator, you, like you're not gonna be able to haul a motorcycle on the back of it unless you've got like a little trailer behind it. And doubles towing is actually legal in many states with fifth wheels but not travel trailers. So kind of keep that in mind and always check with your local ordinances. I don't know every state's uh, guidelines. Now, either this RV has blown me away or it's the weather about to do that. So I'm gonna wrap things up. Oh boy, right there. I'm about to, uh, I'm about to seriously get, like, they're, they're, you ever see Twister when the cow's flying through the air? I'm about to get squished by a random bovine. By the way, the chances of you being killed by a cow are always low, but never zero. Keep that in mind. Anyway, um, sorry. If you'd like to learn more about this, check the links in the video description. I'll also leave you a couple links to some similar floor plans I've seen from other builders like Cougars 29 RLI, very similar, also very good. I'd love to know of the of those or whichever one else you've seen out there, which would you go with and why? And I'll give you another option. If you're like, I, I like that big living room, but I don't have an Eagle budget. What if I could get you most of those Eagle things without the Eagle budget? And Arctic Wolf does that very, very well. All those links in the video description. And if you appreciate how we're uh, doing things today, even risking getting squished by a cow, uh, carried by the breeze, hit that subscribe button and join us on the next one. And if you've already done that, regular members of the RV Nerd Herd, let me know you're out there. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and uh, stay grounded, everyone. <laughs>